<laughs> ah, we laugh. Boom, 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 boom. We're here. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Welcome to Let's Get Educated. Uh, we got one of our panelists stepped out for a second. So we're going to come right back. When she comes right back, we're going to get started. So I'm going to try to share this on my page. Hey, y'all. If anybody is, has joined already, please like and share. I'm about to like and share myself, too. <laughs> Okay, I shared it. So, good evening, everybody. Welcome to Let's Get Educated. I guess what, what we call this conversations, right? Let's get edu educated conversations. It's been so long since we did this. So, I got to, like, you know, I got to get comfortable with this thing all over again. But listen, listen, listen. We're going to have some fun. We're going to have some fun. We're going to talk about some tea, y'all. We bring y'all some good tea about HIV. Is y'all excited? Because I know I'm excited. Y'all excited, Ron and Sharon? Sh you know I can't never say your name. I made I made you. Yes, I'm, I'm excited. <laughs> so she went out again. So I'm very excited. Back. I'm excited. Yeah, Ron is excited. You kicked it off. This 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 all you here, yeah. son. This all you. You, you kicked this thing off. <laughs> I'm here so, for it. <laughs> you here for it? I'm here for it too. I'm, I yeah. can't wait to I can't wait to see what you finna tell us. This all you. I should have. I should let you get in this seat, and I should be over there because you got a lot to tell You got a lot to talk about, hunty, hunty. But listen, listen, listen. Like I said, if y'all um, it's one person on right now. Can y'all please like and share this live? We bring y'all the tea about HIV, y'all. It's three of us, three HIV positive people. Showing y'all that HIV really means nothing, nothing at all. It really means nothing to our life. It means nothing to our our legacy. It means nothing to our. I didn't. I didn't. I kicked that out. <laughs> it means nothing. It means nothing. So we're gonna it be talking nothing. about. We're gonna be talking about how HIV show us how to live. And I know that may sound crazy, right? HIV showing you how to live because usually when you hear somebody say, "Oh my God, she got the package." Oh, she got that, it, you know, all that type of stuff. You instantly think death. Oh, they're going to die. They're going to look funny. They're going to lose weight, all of that. But for us, HIV did not kill us. And it, it has not killed so many other people. It actually showed us how to live, how to live healthier lives, how to, to live with purpose. It showed us, oh, here she come. It showed us so many different things. So that's what we're here today is to give you guys our input <laughs> on how HIV show us all how to live. So first, my name is Shatrivia. I'm Shatrivia Kennedy. I'm visionary. Shatrivia. I am the founder of Unique Purpose, Inc. Um, I've been HIV positive for 17 years, and it has been an uh, amazing ride. I'm going to say that. <laughs> went from sadness. I went from pain to purpose, sadness to a lot of pain <laughs> along the way. So I've been, been going through, um, I'm going to call it hell and hot water. But I'm finally above water right now, and I'm floating, and it actually feels really good. I would swim, y'all, but I ain't figured out how to swim yet. <laughs> so I'm going to mm -hmm. do a little float right now, so I'm ready to swim. So I want everybody to um, introduce yourself, Ron, introduce yourself, and then, no, Sharon, you introduce yourself first, ladies first, and then, Ron, you introduce yourself. We can't hear you. Oh, Sorry for the um, technical difficulties I'm having over here. Um, I, my name is Sharon Jones. Um, I've been living with HIV 22 years now. I was diagnosed at the age of 22. I'm currently 44. I had started in, I just call it a, I hate to call it a business, but um, I say, what's a nice word um, to to name it? But I started. Well, I I was just say the name of the company. I found it. I know awareness to uniquely um, deliver HIV related information, education space for me to share my personal experiences 
living with HIV. And I'm happy to be here with with you two and just share experiences on how HIV showed me how to live. Okay, okay. All right, Ron. Oh, I can't hear her, but I'm Ron Carson um, from CarsonsCarpets.com. I've been positive for eight years. Oh, you got much more to say than that. <laughs> oh, I didn't even know if y'all heard me or not. Everything oh, we definitely hear you. We definitely hear Okay, you. so what... Yeah, that's oh. what's up, trouble. <laughs> Ron, don't be out only acting shy. This is not a shy moment. You will get all you better get right to it. I'm not playing. <laughs> but anyhow, I got you. So about two weeks ago, Ron. So y'all, I know y'all know a few months ago, me and Ron, we did a live together where um <clears throat> we talked about um actually he he became publicly HIV positive um maybe about two months ago. But about two weeks ago, he came down here to Chicago and he took me out for my birthday. It was like amazing. With his rooftop, it was absolutely amazing. We had so much fun. And he actually was on his way to Africa. So while he was there, we was texting every day. He was posting pictures. And he texted me and said, HIV showed me how to live. And when he said that, I said, what? I said, I dare you to go live. <laughs> I said, I dare you to go live. <laughs> And he was like, um, I'm like, we need to get, we need to go lab about this. And then he was like, do a panel. We need a panel discussion. So this is where it originated from. This man, I met him on YouTube. Well, actually, he met me <laughs> because I was just doing what I do. Y'all know what I do. I just be talking, right? And we, we became friends to my channel. And it, we built a friendship. And now we just, we like family now in a sense, right? So for him to go to Africa and share that experience with me, and to tell me that HIV showed him how to live, that was amazing to me. So my first question yes. is going to be, for y'all, i answer my questions last. <laughs> my question for you first, Ron, is how did HIV show you how to live? Because it showed me how to live because when I first caught HIV, I was very uneducated, so I thought I was going to die. And I, and, that, and that was at the beginning of my head. I remember the first thought. I got diagnosed like Lord Jesus I'm not going to see my kids graduate high school I'm not going to be able to help them so like you were saying like how people think death I thought that too and as I educated myself out of that fear um, it just showed me how to live because it, like I started taking vacation stuff I had never I didn't even ride on the airplane until I was HIV positive so it showed me like so anytime that you think you're going to die and you don't it, it teaches you things. So, and I had the opportunity, because HIV ain't been, it's never been no health problems to me. So I was almost blessed to have that reality and not really be dying. Cause I thought I, especially now eight years, I never in a million years that I think I was good. I'm talking about at the beginning, but I educated myself out of that fear. And when I educated myself out of that fear, it taught me how to live in the moment because it could have been like, even when my, Stepmom just died last month from pancreas cancer. That taught me how to live more. Because I had been tripping about my condition for so long. I'm like, it could have been worse. And never had I talked. I always spited God for that. Like, you did this. Or not, or you allowed this. And it made me think, like, he it's really a blessing because it could be way worse. And I look at it completely different now. Okay. Even just yeah. since my stepmom passed from pancreas cancer, she she died in nine days, mm. and I'm getting around here for nine years, boo wow. booing and hollering and healthy, healthy. So like, a lot of things teach me how to live. HIV was the main one, but it it, it taught me how to live. A lot of times, I I be telling people, um, we don't have an HIV problem, right? We don't have a, a physical problem from HIV. It's more of a mental, um, the way that we look at things, the way we look at ourselves. We really don't have a, a physical problem when it comes to HIV. We just don't have an HIV problem, baby. They just said that. <laughs> we take our medicine, we be fine, but we go through other things that has nothing to do with the physical part that we everybody thinks that it is. We don't. Yeah, we don't it's, go mostly, it's mostly it's mostly it's, it's it's like a social sickness. Is this because and, and an exile? And most of it is that what we do to ourselves, not even other people exiling us, us doing it to ourselves. 
Period. So what about you, Sharon? Yeah, I'm calling you Sharon. You know, I give yeah. you the name. Um, similar to um what you and Ron is stating. Okay, how about now? You can hear well, Shativia, can you hear me? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Well, sorry, I might be having well, I have been having some technical difficulties. But um just like y'all saying, you know, healthy living with HIV. You know, that is a thing. And that's something that you know, people need to add into their um well I can hear a lot of his background if he can go on mute for a moment that would be helpful Ron Ron try to go on mute I'm gonna go on mute too what's wrong try to see if you can mute your phone so so that she can talk because I can't hear her. Yeah, yeah try, try to mute. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, hopefully, um, he when he catches the playback, he can hear me. Oh, I can hear um, now. But, okay, yeah, you can hear her. Well, similar to like you were stating, you know, just this, you know, being able to live healthy with HIV, um, that's definitely something. I learned. I can hear your background a lot, Ron. Okay, I don't hear it now. Okay, thank you. you. Okay, thank you. Yeah, um, but it, you know, it, it definitely showed me how to live, and I think I thank you and Shativia for even having this conversation. Um, and can you re reiterate your question, Shativia? Sorry. Um. Basically, um, I, the first question was, how did HIV teach you how to live and not just exist? Um, one, one, um, because I am, um, I do have shy tendencies. Uh, I am, I, I, I'm more than sometimes shy. And it has a little bit to do with my name growing up with the name Chiron and there was a lot of joking, like, hey, are you shy? And I was already shy. So that kind of molded me to be a little bit more shy. But I would always just smile a lot. I had the nickname Smiley. I didn't talk much. I was just, uh, I, used, I used to observe a lot. But since, you know, being diagnosed with HIV, it, it, it had me regain power and um, power and one just disclosing publicly. I, I regained my power from just, you know, speaking on it openly and just not allowing people to just hush, hush and, you know, talk behind closed doors, you know, talk behind my back and try to use that against me as if that's a weakness. So I took this diagnose, diagnosis as a strength. And um, in addition to it, it um, motivating me to speak more, um, it has also opened my eyes to, um, to you know, to to travel, to to meet many people, you know, other a lot of people who also live with HIV, um, a lot of people in in the field of work. So, um, you know, HIV it just showed me it it showed me a lot. And uh, as far as, you know, showing me how to live, you know, just to, to live um, empowered and and just be, you know, you know, just just to to be strong, to be prideful and um, proud 
and you know be confident you know all of those um you know all of those those positive words it you know it, it showed me i had to do that for myself and and for my my immediate family and my community people i know people i don't know that's what um hiv has showed me regarding how to live okay all right miss strong woman it's miss strong strong sh sh ron Sharon. <laughs> <laughs> well for me is um wow kind of weird I, I don't like being I, I don't like being put on the spot y'all and it's so crazy listen i'm shy too everybody don't, don't think i'm shy but i'm really shy everybody say i'm always talking but i'm really actually shy for real in real life like literally i'm shy if you catch me somewhere i'll probably be quiet in the corner somewhere i'm really shy but this is not the shy moment right we we breaking out of this this shyness um and we're gonna move up to the front right the front of the room <laughs> so for me hiv showed me how to live by showing me my purpose um, before before HIV happened, I really was just breathing and I just was doing things. Um, just I'm gonna say like I was immature and I really didn't know what life was all about. I really didn't care about life. Life didn't really mean anything to me. Um, so when I when I became HIV positive, I found God. I think maybe a few years after my diagnosis, I found God and that gave me a sense of purpose. Um, and I think maybe not, not, not immediately. It didn't give me a sense of purpose because in the beginning it was like, I was going through so much pain and so much sadness that God became my, my comfort. So I, I, I learned who God was, um, because I was HIV positive before that. I didn't know, I didn't know anything about God. I knew a God, but I didn't know the God, right? This is a difference. Everybody know God. But when you, um, when you build a pers a personal relationship with him, it becomes different. So building that relationship with him um, led me to my purpose and got and, and life started to mean something to me, not only for me, but for my family, for other people. And that's what led me to hold on um, public because I wanted other people to live and I didn't want other people to just exist. So for me, um, HIV showed me how to live by finding, finding out my purpose and finding out who God was, um, which leads me to my next question. Um, I, will answer the first, I will answer this question first because it kind of like really um coincide with, with what i how i just answered the question um what 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 direction was your life in before your hiv diagnosis um was it good or bad so for me i was in a bad situation before my um hiv status i was more, I'm, a, I'm gonna say a hood chick you know what I'm saying? i was a hood girl i was in the streets um my boyfriend he was in the streets going in and out of jail i just was living um a deadly lifestyle i was um, living in darkness in a sense to me, that was the worst, the worst place for me. Um, looking at my life now compared to um, then, I was living in darkness. I was in Satan's playground. And because of HIV happening to me, um, it changed my life in the best way ever. So compared to then to now, my life is much better because I am not in darkness. I am sunshine, baby. <laughs> I am I'm I'm sunshine in dark places. So that's uh, for me. So, what about you? Um, you asked me or Ryan? You. Um. Uh, well, for me, um, the direction of my life before my HIV diagnosis, um, I was okay. Um, I was 22 years old. I was a mother of one. I was living on my own independently in Manhattan, Spanish Harlem. Um, I was in college. You know, things were on a, on a good path. And when I did receive that diagnosis, you know, I had those same feelings like you and Ron had, had expressed. And I also felt like I had a point to prove as well. And I just told myself, I'm gonna continue on with life. You know, I'm gonna continue, um, you know, continue my college courses. I'm just gonna continue 
you know, I'm not going to drop anything and, and, and go into, um, you know, a depression. I just carried on with my life and, you know, it was pretty easy for me to do at that time. One, because I was living on my own and, you know, I didn't need to hide any medications or, you know, any, um, medical documents or anything. So, you know, I had privacy. Um, I gave myself time to to think about and, you know, process everything. You know, I didn't rush to to tell everyone. I just you know, I, I just, you know, was taking care of myself, doing what I felt like needed to be done. For me to take care of myself and to continue taking care of myself. So, you know, I was on a positive path and I committed myself to continue on a positive path at, you know, during that diagnosis. Um, yeah. Sound like you, it sounded like, um, it sounded like you was already on, on a positive, um, you was already in a positive, going in a positive direction when when your diagnosis happened. And sometimes it be seeming like sometimes mm -hmm. stuff be happening sometimes to stop us. But it sounds like you didn't stop. You continue to move forward. You didn't let the diagnosis stop you from getting your education nor living yeah. and being, being free. Because when you said I, yeah. I, didn't, I didn't have myself, I was taking care of myself. I didn't have to have. And that was a sense of freedom, being able to go home and put that pill bottle on that table and not have to worry about, you know, nobody uh, looking at you in no type of way. So I felt like um, you had a sense of freedom and you didn't give up. So I actually, I like that. I ain't know you ain't never tell me that. I'm I'm learning new stuff yeah. about y'all today. Man. I, be, I be thinking we be talking about a lot of stuff. I see we don't. You never <laughs> told me. Thanks. Thanks for sharing that. What about you, Ron? Um, I was doing all right. I know I was at the end of my marriage, so both of us was like splitting up and getting back together again. So when I got diagnosed, um, it was pretty much over then. What it did for me was it made me way more focused, like because that's how I am. Instead, when when I got when I'm coming up with like something bad, I have to stay focused. Like it's gonna make me work harder. And then I had turned into a single dad too. So it was just everything had happened. There, I was diagnosed. The marriage was over, and now I was a single dad because me and my wife, my son wasn't my wife's. You know what I'm saying? He stayed with me. Thank God. But it just made me super duper focused. It made me a better dad because, like, the social stuff had happened. So, really, I didn't have anybody. It was just me and him. I always tell you that it was just me and Caden. That's why me and Caden so cool because it was just me and him. So, I focused on him. I raised him, and it made me start a business. I worked harder. And even today, I still find myself doing it. It's a coping mechanism. And the coping mechanism has turned out to be like a career for me. And that's only because HIV. I know it is. So I had, I opened, you know, I got a carpet cleaning business. I did that. Just I, I, was, I was so busy. And you know, even right now, I'm, I still haven't slowed down. But that's only since HIV. Like, I'm, I always be busy. Busy, 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 busy. The only time that I even have time to think about anything is at nighttime. And I I kind of set it up like that because I've never gotten therapy and I really need it. <laughs> but like, so it made me better because it made me like a go-getter. And again, it taught me how to live. So I know like I ain't got no time to waste. And I remember the first thought I had because like I'm a man, I'm a provider first. And I always think about like what my kid's going to do. And it terrified me to know that I couldn't get life insurance. And I think I told you that one time. Mm -hmm. So I didn't ever have $10,000 before I got positive. And I, I found out how much a funeral cost. And that was the first goal of mine was to save up enough to bury myself. So I, I could let that part go. Cause that, that was, I was ashamed. Like I, that, is, that hurt in me, but I have, you know what I'm saying? I've saved more now, but that was the start. Like I got, I can't go out like that. So that, that that was huge for me. I still be thinking about um the day the day we started talking about those gym shoes. <laughs> <laughs> you was all saying this stuff, but you instantly, as soon as I started talking about them gym shoes, baby, you like, hold on, <laughs> wait right. a minute. 
Uh uh, because you always been like, I always um, I always looked at you even before we actually met in person. You was like a manly man because you talked about your son so freaking much, <laughs> like so much. Right. I didn't want even want to ask you like, where's his mama? <laughs> I, I didn't right. want to ask you. You always talked about your you talked about your son so much. I I felt like um, your son was keeping you alive. That's how I how yes, I, I used to I feel. did too. I do too. Sometimes I look at his. You know, we got Facebook and the memories pop up, and and the memory of Papa. And I look at Caden. I told you this before. He'll be so clean and i knew i knew i could look at the picture and tell you what i was going through that day and i'll bust out crying sometimes but now like i'm on the other i'm really not that depressed anymore even though i do need therapy i'm not where i need to be but i'm not where i was and i've yeah. come a long way but so even now i look at it like wow i was really messed up but look how good katie look look how even good i look like yeah. look how i was taking care of us still and I just weep. And even when his birthday comes, like you should see the post I write or the things to him I write, like why he, how he helped me survive. Because it was just me and him. But after a while, that's not good enough. Because I have to yeah. love myself like that. And that's, that's where yeah. I'm at now. So he's back with his mom and I should live. Like my mama told me one day, you are you and my Caden. I was like, don't nobody love me. I don't yeah. even love me. The medicine too much. I don't need the medicine. I'm not even worth it. She said, "Would you tell Kate? Would you tell Kaden that your son, nigga, you you my Kaden?" And I've been I always think about that now. So like, I have to love myself like I love Kaden and my other what three kids, talking? two kids, not just Kaden. I'm just thinking about um, just thinking about us being HIV positive. Just thinking about the things that we then experience because we're not talking about any um, sadness, no depression, no anxiety, and all of that. But we know we have experienced that. We're just talking about the the good side to being HIV positive. But mm -hmm. I cannot, I cannot <laughs> go no further without saying this. Um, I admire all of us um, because I know it's been days when we could not get out of bed. I know yeah. it's been days where we really didn't want to take the medicine, like just forget the medicine. It's in times we didn't mm -hmm. want to go to the doctor. We didn't want to deal with them kids. We didn't want to deal with life at all. But we still dealt with life. And we're here today um, able to express the 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 um the happy part of being HIV positive and right. not the sad part. So that really means a lot to me to have both of y'all here to be able to talk about the good part to being HIV positive. Because so many people think so negative when it comes to that. So to be right. here on this panel with a woman that's been positive for 22 years that has started her own business, has made this a career. She she sells books. She's an advocate. She's been traveled all over the world. Like, I'm like, I feel honored to be sitting, you know what I'm saying? Sitting right here with y'all. And then for you, Ron, you you travel since, I, I think we've been knowing each other three years. You have been all over the world since I, I've met you. We, listen, when I talk to y'all, we don't talk HIV, right? We don't talk about that. Like you literally been traveling all around the world. You love your kids. It's just something about um, the way you love on your kids. Not only your kids, you are a family man. We do not discuss HIV-related things. So to be here with y'all and to discuss these things, it really makes me happy. Because for me, I remember I couldn't get out of bed. And I know I never, like, people see me as being so positive and being so um, inspirational and all those good things. But I don't, I rarely talk about the sadness. And maybe one day we'll come back and talk about that. But I don't talk about how sad I was and how depressed I was and how I lost myself because of my diagnosis. I don't talk about those things because I'm so far from that. Um, so for us to be here, it's like, I'm just like, I'm like getting the chills right now, y'all. <laughs> like I'm, I'm getting the chills. Um, <laughs> just being here listening to y'all, y'all stories. But um, for me, um, kind of different Every, everything everything for me is just like so different i be feeling like things for me is so different but it's really the same right so the right. next question anyway i was about to go off to some other stuff but let me stop because y'all know <laughs> i would get to talk we'll be on here two hours i get to talk so the next question is um who have who have you helped since wait what is it who, who have you helped with your experiences from hiv oh i'm gonna start with that one i, I can start this one first <laughs> who have i helped since my diagnosis and with my experience, I have helped everybody that come within three feet of me, literally. Um, and I and I said starting out that I was shy. I am really actually shy for real. 
um, I really don't like talking because sometimes I be like, I don't speak proper English, right? But once I get going, I cannot stop. If you become within three feet of me and you ask me a HIV related question or a God related question, you must be ready for 45 minute conversation with me. So anybody, anybody get it when it comes to um, my experiences, my expertise um, or me helping them in any way that I can. So I have a YouTube channel where I met Ron and me and Sharon. We met on Facebook. Um, I do the Facebook. I do the Instagram. I do YouTube. I do it all. Not only that, I'm an author. I be forgetting to say that sometimes. I forgot to say that when I started out. It's, it's like so many different things. When I say so many different things, who you are and what you do are two different things. So I feel like right now is not the time for me to tell all this stuff I do because right now, I'm being a host, right? So I don't want to say, oh, I'm doing this, I'm doing this, but actually, I'm actually an author too, and I'm a publisher. So a lot of, a lot of, a lot of my experiences, I don't only help people that's HIV positive. I help people that's struggling in any area of life. I help them um, with so many different things. So for me, like I said, three feet. You come three feet of me, you come to my page, you are gonna get it. <laughs> so what about you, Sharon? Um, similar to you again, y'all. I could just um say ditto for all of y'all answers, but the same with me. Um, just about anyone I um I meet, you know, whether we meet in person, whether we meet on social media, um, whether we whether people get to know me through my book or my movie or my music. Um, I feel like I have helped people um, because of me sharing my experience living with HIV. Um, I, I make myself available um, to, you know, for guest speaking. I've been um, guest speaking at a youth organization for well over um, 10 years now. So, I'm I'm always, you know, answering questions and just, you know, being being of help, you know, by answering their question, not just, you know, me just, you know, giving out uh, information, but me answering the questions they want answered. So, you know, for those who who I'm having conversations with. Or those who just hear conversations that I've had with other people, um, I have I I have a help to um, when when I first um, when I first became public about my HIV diagnosis, I wanted to help youth. You know, I wanted to show you know, uh, a healthy person living with HIV, a confident person living with HIV, a strong person living with HIV. And, and I believe I was able to do that, um, you know, just by making myself available and, you know, sharing my story um, because I just felt it was important for me to do so because we we know the the images that have been pushed out there in the media you know doesn't reflect us so you know i wanted to put myself out there so that they could see me and i could help them you know because unfortunately there's a lot of youth that you know have been diagnosed, will be diagnosed, you know, are diagnosed, and I just wanted them to see me and know that you know things would be okay. That's important. That's amazing. That's, That's amazing. amazing. That's yeah. You said will be, have yes. been, like. <laughs> Man, that was, <laughs> yes, that was a lot. That was a lot. Go ahead, Ron. Answer your question. I really don't have a lot to answer to that, so I hope y'all about good because I, I haven't really been public yet. 
But I know it is an amazing work for me to do, and I have been preparing for it, though. Mm. Okay, the type of person I am, the type of person I am, like, I always help people anyway. Like, I, I think I told you this before. Like, it was all this gossip about me. Nobody <laughs> slid in my inbox and said, I love you. Are you, are you? I don't care. I love you. And when people tell people stuff like that, when they tell me stuff like that, I always... I don't care what the conversation was. I always devil back and let them know. I don't even care what's wrong. I, so I love you. You don't even have to tell me what you got. I don't even ask them that. And I feel like people never did that for me, but I always do that for people. And maybe this made me do, be like more of a person like that. Cool. That makes sense. That makes sense. So our last question, y'all, our last question, we get through ask, answering these questions. I want y'all to tell what y'all got going on. What's new about y'all businesses, y'all books, or where they can find you. She said book, movie. Like, you in a movie, Sharon? Yes, yes, yes. I have executively produced an independent movie. A Piece of Me with HIV is streaming on Amazon. A Piece of Me with HIV. Yes, I I funded it myself, um, cast it. Wrote the script, um, had a fabulous um, team of um, directors, a husband and wife team, and and everybody added to it. You know, all the actors and actresses, they added to it. It just came together. Um, It was definitely guard ordained. Can you repeat that? to see it. Oh, Did thank you. you. Yeah. Do it in the description, trivia. Is the link going to be in the description? No. Uh, once we're done, we all can post our links in the um in the comments on Facebook. We can do that. Ron, this oh, one of the moments. This one of the moments when we say um HIV what? HIV who? <laughs> <laughs> HIV what? <laughs> we been we been we been dying to say it. <laughs> Me and Ron yeah. always be saying it all the time. HIV what? HIV who? <laughs> that's one of that's one of the moments um to say HIV what? Um, but the last question is, I'm gonna answer it because this one, this one's fun for me, y'all. This one, y'all know I like to have fun, right? <laughs> so the last question is, what is exciting about being HIV positive? And I know that may sound really, really, really crazy, right? <laughs> How could it be exciting to live with HIV? And it, like even when I had all of other questions, Ron, Ron had um actually put together the questions. But I actually put that one together. That was the last question that I had said. And he didn't say nothing. He didn't say nothing. He just went away through the text. So I was like, I probably should have said that. <laughs> right? Who cares? <laughs> Who cares? Because this is exciting to me. I don't know about y'all. This has been really a ride. It's been like an um, emotional roller coaster, highs and lows and everything. But I'm at the, I'm actually at the end of the, the sadness and the depression from it. So now I can find some type of excitement um, from it. So the excitement and fun for me with being HIV positive is once again, <laughs> me finding out my purpose and what God wants me to do. Like today, today, I, this is um, testimony time, right? Today, I, I, I sit and I, I friend people on Facebook every day. That's like what I do. I delete and friend every day. And today, I friend people, like I always do, and a young lady came to my inbox and she said, I don't know why you inbox me or where you come from, but I'm so glad you inboxed me because I've been HIV positive for six years. So I went and looked, I'm like, dang, where she come from? So I'm like, I thought you was a CNA, so I, I added you because you was a CNA. She said, I'm not a CNA, and I was not on the CNA feed. She said, I don't know where you came from, but I'm so glad that you came. And she was like, thank you for sharing your story. And it made me feel like that was a sense of excitement for me. Like, wow, I didn't even know. I didn't know what I was doing, but it happened like that. And that always happens to me. Like somebody can come through my inbox or somebody can text me, call me, all that. That's excitement for me to know that my pain and the things that I've experienced is helping somebody else. That excites me to know that my pain is my power and my power became the purpose that leads me to do what I do every day. That's so exciting. I get up every day with excitement. Before I even touch the flow, I'll be like, I'm about to make HIV, HIV mad today, period. I don't know how I'm going to make HIV mad every day, but I have a goal every day I open my eyes is to make HIV mad. And that excites me because I don't know how I'm going to do it, but I know I'm going to get it done before the day over with. So that's what 
my excitement is because I be making HIV mad. <laughs> so that's my excitement. What about you, Sharon? Again, I'm just double backing on y'all answers. Sorry. <laughs> but yes, um, I have that excitement too. You know, every day, um, you know, sharing the good words that we have um, delivered, you know, through God, um, you know, the materials that we, we created, sharing it, um, just, just showing out, you know, showing, showing out, letting HIV know you do not have the best of me. And I'm going to put this material out here to show you the best of me. Yes, it, it's HIV been exciting. HIV don't have us, period. Yes. I yes, I got HIV by the neck. <laughs> 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 I'm going to grab the feet. I'm going to grab the feet. I guess you. I guess you. I'm going to grab the feet. Trying to tell you. That's, that's, that's yeah. nice. That's wonderful. What about you, Ron? Well, I think that when you, like when you've been to the depths that we've been to and to the lows and depression, you thought you was going to die, everything can be exciting. Oh, everything is exciting to me. Knowing that yeah. I'm going to live and be healthy, like every, I make everything exciting. Mm -hmm. That's the way. That's what's up, y'all. This has been this was so fun. We should we should do this again next month, y'all. This was really fun. This was really fun. It really made me happy. Like I, I really um I had got the like the chills on my skin had started feeling funny <laughs> when y'all was talking. I just started like I talk to y'all a lot. Well, no, maybe not a lot, but I talk to y'all. But to be in this um type of environment with y'all. Had me looking like, dang! I I really talked to some dope people, you know. Like y'all are absolutely. Yeah, I feel the same way. Amazing! I am so glad that HIV connected us, um, because if it wouldn't have, we wouldn't be here, right? <laughs> so I'm glad that HIV connected right. us, and we have built um these friendships. We networking together, and moving forward, we can keep doing the same things. So for me, y'all, I know y'all y'all already know. I am a, I'm a CNA. CNAs on the move. <laughs> we see. I, actually, all of all three of us are CNAs. To be honest, we all are CNAs. We all are on the move to do something um, greater. For me, CNA on the move means a CNA that is not going to be a CNA for the rest of their life. They're on a the move to something greater, something bigger than themselves, right? But they use the CNA job to fund the thing that they want to do. So that's what actually all three of us are right now in our life. So I am a publisher. I publish other people's books, but for the most part, I'm noticing that my books, all the books that I publish for people is really like testimonial books. I really do urban books too, but for the most part, it'd be people that really want to share their struggle and their, their, their life through, um, through, through the books. And I'm also uh, an author myself. I have 18 books. <laughs> I have 18 That's books. I have a, a, a variety of books. Um, I have urban books. I have self-help books. I have Christian books. I have a journal. I have a um, <laughs> I have a, a crossword puzzle book, which I'm gonna release another one next month. I'm also thinking about a children's book. Um, I got so many different things that I, I just think you should you should try to reach everybody where they at. I want to reach everybody. I always tell people when I'm dead and gone, my words will be here on the earth. Period. They still will be here helping people. The same thing I do and I'm doing right now with be, be being done when I am gone. So I use those things. And not only that, I have a nonprofit now. It's actually, I actually didn't have it. All, I actually had it for two years, but I'm actually, um, my 501c3 was approved. So I'm, oh man, y'all see. I, Congratulations. I, 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 Congratulations. I Congratulations. Listen, yeah. I woo -woo. And what, what happened? The dog on screen went on. That ain't number no statement anyway. I'm still going to see it. See it. So my 501c3 was approved. So I actually have a, a serious nonprofit. So I'm having my second annual event. And Ron came to my event last year. Listen, y'all, Ron lives in, in Michigan. He came all the way down in the snow. It's cold, y'all. He came down here for my, my first event. I'm having 
my second event, the second weekend of December. I really hope that Sharon can come down here, but I know she might not. But I'm I'm still um still hoping and praying that she's able to come. So I'm I'm actually looking for donations. I need people to donate to the cause, y'all. But I'll talk about that on a different day. I'm actually gonna go live this weekend and talk about um the event that I'm having. But other than that, I don't have too much going on. I have Bible study tomorrow, y'all. Listen, uh, I have Bible study going on tomorrow. A lot of y'all been following me for a long time, even before um I became publicly HIV positive. So I have been doing this for a very, very long time. But and a lot of y'all know that I have been serving God and crushing on God for a very long time. <laughs> I've been crushing on God a very, very long time, years and years and years and years. But I actually... I have stepped out of the crushing stage and we are in relationship. <laughs> and this relationship yeah. has led me to Monday prayer. And also now the third, the third Tuesday of each month, I will be doing a women's Bible study. So if you're interested in that, please inbox me so that I can give you information. But other than that, I don't have anything else going on. So Ron, what do you have going on with your life, hunty? Well, that's some wonderful things you got going on and, and Ron as well. Um, for me, um, I'm working on um, planning a World AIDS Day event. Um, it most likely would be a pre-screening of the movie um, along with some discussions because each scene of the movie um, has some you know, strong points to be made. You know, the movie is for educational purposes, not just entertainment, educational purposes. So I will be, um, you know, helping, in, well, hosting um, a pre-screening. Um, also, um, you know, me and Shativia, uh, we have a collaboration book that's that's um, coming out very soon, where we'll be sharing some um, untold stories of our experience as a CNA. Um, hopefully Ron is a part of that book as well. Um, it's nice that we have so much in common, not just our <laughs> HIV status. No, for sure. I've been noticing the parallels as well. <laughs> yes. And, um, I'm just, I'm also working on another book, um, um, Buy a Home, um, well, th excuse me, this, I, I am, I, I'm still working out the title, but, um, well, my last book is, um, 20 Steps to Make an Independent Movie, um, based off of my experience of, of making my independent movie. My next book is um, Purchase a Home in 31 Days. And I'll be talking more about that in the future. So the, you know, the two books that are in the making right now, Shativia's um, collaboration book of untold stories of frontline CNAs and the you know, buy a home in 31 day book that I'm working on, but I'm continuing to market the seven books I have published thus far. My autobiography, A Piece of Me with HIV, the movie script and discussion guide, um, and three children's book, an activity book, a coloring book and a storybook and the 20 steps to make an indep independent movie book is a is a workbook is an actual workbook where you know every page you you filling in you checking boxes you preparing you know you're planning your independent movie so um, I still have work to do as far as um, letting people know those books are available. So I'll be spending more time on that. But, you know, books, movie, music. That's amazing. I need to pre-order Buy a Home in 31 Days. Okay. 
Thank you for that. I don't know. I already fixed my credit, so I'm ready. Oh, yes. Yes. That's great. That's okay, so Ron, wonderful. Tell us, tell us what you got going on, Ron. Because my stuff don't be sounding all good and long like y'all, but you know, I got the Carson's carpet cleaning going. I definitely focus in on that way more. I'm going coming in the future. I'm trying to flip another house, but like well, I told fun. y'all, I just be busy working. I'm a working man. So, is there any way we can get you on this collab with us? Yes, because I got some stories. Well, I'm gonna have to throw you in the chat. We we down to like 30 days. In 45 days before it's time to submit. So we need you now, to jump on. What it was called, it. CNA stories. Um, untold stories of frontline CNAs. What well, we basically right, talk about: CNAs. beginning, middle, and after pandemic. Okay. So we'll throw you in the chat and see if you see if you want to um see if you want to get down with us. You know, sure. <laughs> it'd be fun. Sure. It'd be really fun to have a man on on board, though. It really would. It'd be yeah, fun for sure. So we're gonna yeah. um add you in there, but listen, y'all, when we done with this, y'all, y'all put y'all um links in the description. And I honestly want to thank y'all for joining. This has been so much fun. Y'all actually made me feel some type of way today. Y'all did not make me cry. I'm glad because y'all know I'm a cry baby. So I'm glad I did not cry. But y'all actually blessed my spirit today. And I just want to thank you guys for joining. When I really get really rich for real, when I really get wealthy. I'm gonna be sending y'all cash apps like thank y'all for joining. <laughs> what they say, what you what you want from the gas station? I got y'all. As soon as that check clip. Hey, everybody that support me, what y'all want from the stove? <laughs> and I'm I'll about just take you. some gas. Right. <laughs> but thank y'all for joining. Thanks everybody else for joining as well. I, I act like I forgot y'all was here. Like we just been talking. I forgot we was live for a second. I want to thank everybody for um joining. Do we have any questions in the comments? Let me see. We over here talking. We don't nice meeting you, Sharon. Nice meeting you too, Ron. Thank you so much for all your compliments. And you, you're doing such an awesome job as well with everything in your life. I appreciate that. And like, okay, uh, we don't think... have any comments over here, y'all. So I guess we okay. can end okay. this right. But um, please do not forget y'all to put y'all links in the comments and thanks everybody for watching. And if you own here, listen, please send a share the video sharing is caring. This may not be for you. It may be for your cousin. It may be for your auntie or it may be for your little brother. You never know. It may bless somebody's spirit. Um, if you put this on your wall, y'all, thanks for joining y'all. Peace and sticky. I have to go to sleep. I'm sleepy. For real. Bye y'all. Love y'all. Thank you. It was nice meeting everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Nice meeting you all too. Bye. All right.